Okay, in this lesson, we're going to look at how to increase our frames per second. That is, how many frames every second we're analyzing and working out where the line is and how we need to drive. The faster we can analyze these frames and the more frames per second we can do, the better the robot can decide how it drives and the, consequently the faster it can drive. So to do that, we need to actually start timing and working out how quick these frames are going around. So I'm going to get him to focus on the code. At the very beginning of the code, right at the top, I'm going to add start time equals time dot time. So the start time variable will have recorded in it the time it was when, we, when it first started. I'm also going to have another variable called counter, which I'm going to initialize on zero. And then we start in our loop here, where we start looping around, analyzing the frame and getting the information. Every time it goes around the loop, counter will get one bigger. So this counter will store how many frames it's processed. Then right down the bottom here, after I exit, I take the finish time. So now I have the start time, the finish time, and the counter how many times it does. I can do a simple calculation. Frames per second is equal to the counter divided by the difference between the finish time and the start time. And I'm just going to simply write that to the screen. So now if I look at starting up and making this run. You look down here. What's going to happen is that I don't have any motor control in. We're just timing the actual um, analyzing of the frames. You can see it all works as it's supposed to do. And it doesn't matter if it's moving or it's standing still. Even when it's standing still, it's still analyzing frames. And what happens is when I stop it, it will give me an output. Oop. Oop, I can get it there to focus. Frames per second is just over six frames per second. So we now know our program, how it's running at the moment, is doing six frames per second. Okay, I've modified the code a little bit. All I've done is I've shrunk the resolution of the screen from 640 by uh, 360 down to 320 by 200. There's a couple of little bits I've had to change like when I test to go off the bottom of the screen now is a smaller number because there's less resolution. Also where I calculate my set point, uh, which is off the center, their set point is now going to be 160 because it's half of 360 instead of um, things there. So I've just had to modify a couple of things to suit the lower resolution. Now I've done that, I'm going to run my program. The first thing you'll notice when I run the program is obviously I get a much smaller display box because it's obviously doing a, a smaller smaller bit but everything works the same as we come up with the corners it'll still track the corners it'll still do absolutely everything it needs to do but it'll just do it in a lower resolution now when I exit out of this one and I have a look at my frame rates it's telling me 13 and a half frames per second before I was only getting six so I have more than doubled my frame rates by reducing my resolution there. Okay, I've just modified the code a little bit further. Here where I do the erode, before I was doing five iterations. That's because I was at quite a high resolution. So when I had thin lines, they were still a number of pixels thick. As I drop down resolution, any fine lines become less pixels because of the lower resolutions. So it means instead of having to do this five times, I can do it twice and it will still get out all the fine lines. Now I've also completely removed out this dilate. When I put the little hash there, it turns it into a comment and it tells the program not to run that line. So it'll skip straight over this. And I've taken the dilate out altogether. Now the dilate was about filling in little holes that gave us false positives. Now, in previous lesson, we wrote a bit of code that when you get more than one contour, it picks out the correct contour. So now if there are some little holes that make little contours, it doesn't matter because further down in the code, it removes them. So I have totally removed out the dilate and I have reduced the iterations on the erode. Now when I run my program, Uh, 
we get down here, we'll take him for a little test drive around our track. Everything's still working quite fine as you can see. Bring him back here. And I'll press stop. We zoom in now. Have a look at the frame rates. 27.5. So we've nearly doubled our frame rate again. Okay, I've lowered my resolution even more down to 200 by 120. And I've lowered my iterations down to just one now because the resolution is so low. So now I'm going to try to run my program. We get the tiniest little screen at the back, but it still tells us correctly what our set point is. And it still gives us the correct angle that everything's at for us to be able to drive it around at. We come up here to the corner, still follows around the corners correctly as it should do and everything works correctly as it should do, it just does it in a really low resolution. All right, so now when we stop the program, we get a frame rate count. You can see here we're now doing 50 frames per second. So we're now starting to get up nearly double the speed again.